Emerald City of Oz Dorothy When the people of the Emerald City heard that Dorothy had returned, everyone was eager to see her. She was a very popular personality in the land of Oz. Very few from the outside world had found their way into this fairyland. All but one had been companions of Dorothy. The exception was the wonderful Wizard of Oz, a performer from Omaha who had somehow arrived and left in a hot air balloon. His strange tricks made the people of Oz believe he was a great wizard. He ruled over them until Dorothy arrived and showed them it was all just a show. But he was a gentle, kind-hearted little man, and Dorothy grew to like him. When the wizard returned, Ozma received him graciously and gave him a home in part of the palace. Two others from the outside world had been allowed to make their home in the Emerald City. The first was a shaggy man, whom Ozma had made the governor of the royal storehouses, and the second a yellow hen named Billina, who had a fine house in the gardens behind the palace, where she looked after a large family. Both were good friends of Dorothy. The people thought Dorothy had brought them good luck, and they all loved her dearly like Ozma. During her visits, this girl had killed two wicked witches who oppressed the people, and she had discovered a live scarecrow who was now very popular in the fairy country. With the scarecrow's help, she had rescued Nick Chopper, a tin woodman, who had rested in a lonely forest. The tin man was now the emperor of the country of the Winkies, and loved because of his kind heart. Yet, Strange as it may seem, she had accomplished all these wonders not because she was a fairy or had magical powers, but because she was a simple, sweet, and true girl who was honest to herself and to everyone she met. In this world, simplicity and kindness are the only magic wands that work wonders. And in the land of Oz, Dorothy found these same qualities had won her the love and admiration of the people. Indeed, the girl had many warm friends in the fairy country. Now, she received a joyful welcome, although no one except Ozma knew at first she had finally come to stay for good. That evening, Dorothy had many visitors, and among them were such important people as TikTok, a machine man who thought and spoke and moved by clockwork, her old companion the Shaggy Man, Jack Pumpkinhead, the Cowardly Lion, and the Hungry Tiger, two great beasts from the forest who served Princess Ozma and Professor Wogglebug, who was a remarkable creature and the head of the Royal College. Toto, Dorothy's little dog, was also met with a cordial reception. Toto was a special friend of the Shaggy Man, and he knew everyone else. Being the only dog in the Land of Oz, he was highly respected by the people. Dorothy had four lovely rooms in the palace, which were always reserved for her use, and were called Dorothy's rooms. These consisted of a beautiful sitting room, a dressing room, bedchamber, and a big marble bathroom. In these rooms was everything that the heart desired. The royal dressmakers had the girls measure, so they kept the closets in her dressing room filled with lovely dresses of every description and for every occasion. Dorothy enjoyed all of these luxuries. The only reason she had preferred to live in Kansas was because her uncle and aunt loved her and needed her with them. Now everything had changed, and Dorothy was delighted to know that her dear relatives were to share in her good fortune and enjoy the delights of the land of Oz. The next morning, at Ozma's request, Dorothy dressed herself in a beautiful gown of rich silk and wore jewelry made with precious stones. Ozma announced, From now on, you must assume your rightful rank as a princess of Oz, and being my chosen companion, you must dress in a way that fits your position. Dorothy agreed to this, although she knew that neither gowns nor jewels 
could make her anything other than the simple girl she had always been. As soon as they ate breakfast, Ozma announced, Now we will use the magic belt to transport your aunt and uncle from Kansas to the Emerald City. I think it would be best for us to receive them in the throne room. As you might imagine, they are not very distinguished, Ozma, said Dorothy. They are very plain, like me. If they are your friends or relatives, they are certainly distinguished to me, replied the ruler with a wide smile. I'm sure they will not know what to think of all the splendid jewels and decorations, protested Dorothy. It may scare them to see the grand throne room. Perhaps we should go to the backyard where the cabbages grow and the chickens play. It might be more natural to Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. No, they need to see me in my throne room first, replied Ozma, decidedly. Ozma was accustomed to having her own way, and Dorothy knew it was not wise to oppose her. So, together they went to the throne room, an immense domed chamber in the center of the palace. Here stood the royal throne, made of solid gold and encrusted with precious stones. Ozma, who was wearing the magic belt, seated herself in the throne and Dorothy sat at her feet. The room was assembled by many ladies and gentlemen of the court, clothed in rich apparel and wearing fine jewelry. The cowardly lion and the hungry tiger were on each side of the throne. In a balcony high up in the dome, an orchestra played sweet music and beneath the dome, two fountains sprayed colorful, perfumed water. Are you ready, Dorothy? asked Ozma. I am, replied Dorothy. But she was wondering whether Aunt Em and Uncle Henry were going to be ready for this. They will be fine, declared Ozma. She sensed Dorothy's uneasiness. The sooner they begin their new life here, the happier they will be. Here they come. As she said this, Uncle Henry and Aunt Em appeared in front of them. They stood motionless, staring with white and startled faces at the scene. Aunt Em had on her threadbare blue work dress with a faded blue and red checkered apron. Her hair was undone, and she had on a pair of Uncle Henry's old slippers. In one hand, she held a dish towel, and in the other, a cracked dinner plate, which she had been wiping dry when she was suddenly transported to the Land of Oz. Uncle Henry had been out in the barn working. He wore a ragged, soiled straw hat, a sweat-stained, tan, collared shirt, and blue overalls tucked into the tops of his old cowboy work boots. By gum, gasped Uncle Henry, looking around bewildered. Well, I never said a shocked Aunt Em in a hoarse, shaky voice. Then she looked straight at Dorothy, and she said, D -d -d dorothy Henry! Look out, Em! exclaimed the old man as Aunt Em took a step. Watch out for the beasts! Dorothy sprang forward and embraced and kissed her aunt and uncle affectionately, and then took their hands in her own. Don't be afraid, she said to them. You are in the land of Oz. Dorothy went on saying, You can now live here comfortably and happy. You'll never have to worry about money or the farm ever again. We owe it all to the kindness of Princess Ozma. She led them before the throne and continued, Your Highness, this is Uncle Henry and this is Aunt Em. Aunt Em tried to slick her hair and she hid the dish towel and dish under her apron while she bowed to the lovely Ozma. Uncle Henry took off his straw hat and held it awkwardly. The ruler of Oz rose and came from her throne to greet her newly arrived guests, and she smiled as sweetly upon them as if they had been a king and a queen. You are very welcome here, where I have brought you, for Princess Dorothy's sake, she said graciously, and I hope you will be happy in your new home. Then she turned to her attendants, who were silently regarding the scene, and added, I present you, Princess Dorothy's beloved uncle, Henry, and Aunt Em, who will now live in our kingdom. It will please me to have you show them every kindness and respect in your power. Please join me in making them happy and content. After hearing this, all those assembled bowed low and respectfully to the farmer and his wife, who bowed their heads in return. And now, said Ozma, Dorothy will show you the rooms prepared for you. 
I hope you will like them, and expect you to join me for lunch today. Dorothy led her relatives away, and as soon as they were out of the throne room and alone in the corridor, Aunt Em squeezed Dorothy's hand and said, Dorothy, how in the world did we get here so quickly? Is all this real? Can we live here, as she says? Dorothy laughed. Why didn't you tell us you were going to do this, asked Uncle Henry, sternly. If I knew, I would have gotten more dressed up. I will explain everything to you as soon as we get to your rooms, promised Dorothy. We are in luck, Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. I'm so happy to have you here. As they walked, Uncle Henry stroked his gray whiskers thoughtfully. Pairs to me, Dorothy. Won't we make bang-up fairies, he remarked. My hair's a mess, cried Aunt Em. It's fine, replied Dorothy reassuringly. You have nothing more to do now than to look pretty, Aunt Em. And Uncle Henry won't have to work until his back aches, that is for sure. Are you sure, they asked, wonderingly, and in the same breath? I'm positive, said Dorothy. You're in the fairyland of Oz now, and you belong to it.